Torreon, the state of Coahuila, and the state of Durango, which are both from the mission, uh, is is regarded uh, and revered, uh, almost romanticized by by Mexicans, um, because the area is is uh, the site of a lot of famous uh, Mexican events. Uh, one in particular, uh, Durango is the home state of uh, a man named Guadalupe Victoria, which is the Mexican equivalent of George Washington. Uh, so there's a big monument in the middle of the city. In fact, if I remember right, an, an obelisk, I could be wrong. But uh, there's a big monument in the middle of the city commemorating him. And uh, he was the, uh, one of the first uh, Mexican founding fathers. Uh, there's there's also um, a, a statue in uh, a town called Gomez Palacio, which is uh, bordering Torreon. You know that's almost like a twin city to Torreon. Uh, that and it has a huge statue to uh, blanking on his name. Oh, it has a huge statue to uh, Pancho Villa, Francisco Villa, and uh, you know he was from that area of Mexico as well. The famous Francisco Villa that campaigned in. Uh, in Chihuahua and uh, raided border towns in the United States. Uh, so they have a lot of pride as far as Mexican history goes there. And um, you'll frequently see streets named after uh, these people because Durango and uh, Coahuila are called La Cuna, uh, the, the cradle of uh, the, the founding fathers, basically. So it's it's kind of has a frontier feel to it, but at the same time, it's uh, rich in, in uh, modern Mexican history, I would say. Now, as far as um, the uh, Spanish days go, uh, Torreón is, is relative, a relatively new city with uh, not as much uh, Spanish influence. When I mean relatively new, it's probably about 150 years old or so. And uh, Durango, on the other hand, uh, the downtown is very Spanish. Lots of old cathedrals. Um, you know, this this cathedral's gigantic, um, and it's overlooking a town square with fountains, and it's lined by European-style buildings. So if you go to downtown Durango, it actually looks like you could be in Spain. Um, and then uh, further south in the mission in Zacatecas, uh, there you know there's cobblestone streets. Um, there's statues, there's parks, um, and uh, you know a lot of old, uh, even European-style cathedrals there as well with buttresses. Uh, so, so you get a little bit of a taste of that of that Spanish feel. And then further south in the mission, in the state of Zacatecas, there's uh, an old uh, ruin. Um, there's some old pyramids there, and uh, it's called La Quemada. Um, which means like the the burnt city. Uh, that's because when the Spanish came into the area, apparently they were met with a lot of resistance from this town that had a, a, that was built up. It's built up on a, a plateau or a mesa, and there's you know a few pyramids on top of that. Anyways, they met a lot of resistance from this town, and, and once they overcame it, apparently they just burned everything. Uh, so you can actually still see the you know the the burnt marks on the uh, on the side of the of the of the structures there. Um, and uh, some other important things, um, the Turquoise Trail came through that area and that's uh, an important uh, Spanish trading route. It's also called El Camino Real and that runs from Santa Fe, New Mexico down to Mexico City. So um, the states of Durango and Zacatecas were very important to the Spanish in the late 1500s and the 1600s. Uh, so that, that area is uh, rich with uh, historical significance and a lot of a lot of the towns in Zacatecas in southern Durango you know are are as old as some of the towns in New England area so there's a lot of rich history there